Hi, welcome to part four. If you've watched parts one, two, and three, then you're pretty much up to speed on offsets and tool heights and tool calls and ending programs and actually starting a program. Well, today we are going to enter some G-code and get this machine to move around, but I think it's really important first to show you how to manually put a tool in the machine. It's not gonna do anything unless there's a tool in it, right? There's several different ways to do that. So I guess the, the easiest way, and I'm going to have to put the camera down to do this because loading a tool is usually a two-handed process. But the easiest way is with this guy right here, the tool in and out button. I think I covered that before. If you, if you hit this button and there's a tool in the spindle, you better get ready for it to come out. If there's no tool in your spindle, I'm going to sit this here so you can see what's going on. Pick your tool. Find your index mark on your tool holder and it's usually drilled or marked in some way for balance and these lugs that are under here are different lengths. So the index mark on the tool goes to the long lug. All you need to do now is put gentle pressure upward on this tool, line up the lugs and hit your tool in tool out button. Now do not put your fingers or any part of your hand like this around this tool when you load it. When the air kicks in, it's going to suck the tool in, and you would instantly know you did something seriously wrong. Okay, it's all it takes. First couple times you do that, it's going to scare you a little bit. Don't take your eyes off of anything that you don't have to stop watching. Hit that tool in out button. Keep your fingers and your hands and everything clear of that pinch point because I just can't imagine how bad that would hurt. And it would hurt for a very long time. The second way you can do this is with an M call on the screen. We're going to go to manual until it says ready for manual data input. And we're going to type in an M6 code which is a tool call. And we're not on the stabilizer yet because this is just awkward. So we're going to go M6. T2. Now that means tool change and give me tool number two. I'm going to hit the enter button. The blue light's going to come on as a warning that something's about to happen. Get back into your machine. It is going to take this tool, which is tool number one, put it back in the carousel. The carousel will index to the tool two position. The head will come back down and supposedly you now have tool two. Let's take a look at that happen. Okay, that's a code entry for getting a specific tool in the carousel. You saw the manual load, you saw the code entry, and now I'm going to show you if you want to change a tool in a carousel or find a specific tool in a carousel for who knows whatever, I'm going to show you how to do that too. Go back to your screen and hit manual. When it says enter next command, type in T like Thomas, C like cat, comma one, and hit enter. All right, now nothing else is going to happen at this point. TC comma one is like a tool change comma one. Not a tool change for sake of a program tool change, but a tool change in the carousel. I want to manually change these tools in this carousel. So when you're here, you can control your carousel with your turret buttons. So I'm going to hit the carousel, or the, excuse me, the turret CCW one time. And you can see it brought tool one back into line. You can manually grab tool number one and you can take it out. You can do it the same way to reload the tool. If you know you're in position one, reload it. Make sure your index mark is facing out. And now when you hit the manual button, the machine will grab that tool and if you want to take it out right now, then hit that tool in out button again. Simple. Okay guys, now that you know how to manually load a tool three different ways, I'm going to show you uh, some code here and we're going to get this machine to move around. On the monitor, if you want the line that you're trying to work on, let me get my hand comfortable on the stabilizer, there we go. 
if you want to move throughout the program to move up and down you can hit the D button for down and you can see the cursor moving down on the screen or you can hit the U for up and it'll go back up now between the tool call block and the program end block right here between 35 and 40 there's no information so the machine has no clue what it's supposed to do when it goes to the full automatic program so if we were to hit the auto right now it would read all the information it would go right to the E1000 location and say okay well there's nothing else to do I'm going home so let's see if that's in fact exactly what's going to happen Okay, as expected, it got there, there was nothing to do, there was no command, so it went home. Whoop, ice on the floor. Okay, the machine is ready for you to hit the automatic button again and run a second part. But since we don't want to run a second part, let's go down to the manual. Hit the manual once, twice, puts the main body of the program back on the screen. Now, modal is a term that you're going to hear used a lot with CNC, and that means a command or a location or something that stays in effect until you change it. Now, one of the modal commands that you're gonna to have to worry about or be aware of right now is this G0 on the tool call line, and that is a rapid move. Until you enter a G1 in your program, everything you do is going to be rapid. So that's not something you can control other than with your percentage of rapid travel knob that we covered when we covered the console. I'm going to hit the D button. I'm going to get down to line N35. N35 in this program I was, is where I want to start my movements from. So I'm going to hit the I on the keypad. And it will move me to an insert command. All right, I'll just change over to my left hand and see if that's even better. I'm going to hit G1 because I want this to be a, a feed move. I want to go X minus... 4.0 and Y 4.0 that puts me at the back left corner of an 8 inch square part if the center of the part is my zero position and let's say F for feed rate 50 inches a minute now it's very important that you use a decimal place right here where you're going to get 0.5 instead of 5.0 so hit the decimal place and enter you're still in edit mode it's still allowing you to put in code now, like I said with the modal command, the X and Y location positions are also modal. So if all you want to do is move on the X axis, that's all you have to enter. So I'm going to go X 4.0. That just moved me to the back right corner instead of the back left corner. I want to stay on that plane and I want to move to the front of the part. So I'm going to hit Y minus 4.0. I'm going to keep rolling here, guys. X minus 4.0. And we're going to go Y plus 4.0. Now, if you don't put in a plus sign, that is okay. The machine just assumes that it's a positive move since there is no negative. Let's get inside the machine, and I'll show you exactly what all those numbers were. If the E10 is the center of our part, which it is, some people like it in the back, some people like it where they like it. For something very symmetrical, it's easier to code if it's all the way in the back, for me anyway. So you can see anything on this side is negative X, anything on this side is positive X. Positive Y, negative Y. So this is the code that I just entered. X minus four, Y plus four, and then I stayed right along this edge and I moved over to X plus four. Since these numbers are the same, it doesn't need to be entered twice. Same thing on this edge. Since we are still at X 4.0 all along this edge, we do not have to enter it again. So we're just gonna to go to the Y minus four, and then the X minus four, and then the Y plus four. Now when I hit the auto button here, the machine is going to rapid position to this center right here, feed over here. Now don't grit your teeth yet, anybody with any kind of CNC experience, then it's gonna feed all the way around the perimeter. I'm gonna take a look at that and see if there's any way to improve that, and I'll bet there is. So just sit tight and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna hit the T for top, send my cursor all the way to the top of the program. 
if at this point you want to see what you just programmed, you can now hit the G button for graph. When you hit the G button, you're going to get a whole other screen that opens up. I like to use the A for auto. All right, there is what we just drew. Any line represented by a feed command, a G1 command, will show up on this screen. If you have a line of code in there that you think is going to be a cut and it's a G0 rapid command, it will not show up in this graph. So the tool is going to come over to the center of our part, drop down, feed to the corner, make a square, and get off the part. I'm going to hit the manual one more time. I am at the top. I'm going to go for auto. Wait for the blue light. Make sure everything is clear and everything looks good. And then I'm going to hit the start button and away we go. Feed to the back left corner. Now if we're cutting a square, which ultimately this would be doing if this was a cutter and this was an actual part of material, a full perimeter cut like this is a good thing and it's what you need to do to cut the part. But coming down in the center of your part like that and feeding over to a corner, that's ah, okay if you have two or three parts. But if you're running hundreds of parts, that's a waste of time. All right, now the machine goes back home, all is well. You can make that more efficient. Let's go back to the machine. You have a blue light indicating it's ready for another piece. You're not going to make one, you're going to go into manual, so hit manual. The rapid position in the very, very start of this part is right here. This is the XOY0E10 line. So this is telling your pointer to drop down right on that E10, 0, 0. So this line represents the center of your part. This line here, since there are two characters on that line, represents the diagonal move to the back left corner. Let's transfer these numbers to this location and see what happens. I'm going to hit the D button for down. And since I type with my right hand, I'm going to change the camera here. I'm going to hit the C button for change. The edit line, X minus 4.0, Y 4.0. And you're going to see this line right here change to these values as soon as I hit the enter. Okay, I like it. And now when I hit it, it should change line N25 to the same values. And we are there. Now the machine is going to rapid the initial position to the back left corner. It's going to skip that time consuming diagonal move across the middle. And you're going to start in the back left corner. Without cutter comp, if you have a duplication of lines, it should not be a problem. Let's graph this out by hitting the G and hitting the A. And now we have a perfect square. There's no time consuming, wasted, cutting the air before you drop down on the part and go. I'm gonna hit manual, manual, T for top, auto, wait for the blue light. And let's see if we just save some time. And you have to forgive me guys, I'm new with the gimbal and here we go. All right. Now when it comes down, it comes down right where it's going to start. All these moves are still based exclusively on this E1000 in the middle, but we didn't waste the time to go to the 00 before we started cutting. And I'll tell you, if you got a bunch of pieces to do, you just saved a whole lot of time. This is the G1 command. This is a very popular command, and you're going to use it a lot. You're going to see it a lot. Now watch what happens. All right, the machine is now like 18 inches away from the door. If you're making 100 pieces and you have to lean into this machine, not only are you gonna get a black stripe across your jeans because you're hitting the door track roll of coolant lands, but you're gonna get a backache at the end of the day and you're gonna wish you could deliver those pieces to the front of the machine. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, once again, the machine is waiting for you to make another part, but we're not going to make another part, so we're going to hit manual. And hit manual again to put the entire program back on the screen. You know how I like to see increments of 5. I'm going to hit N, 5, and enter. 
Now I'm going to hit B for bottom on my key panel. B for bottom. It moved my cursor all the way to the bottom of the program. This is where the machine is resting right now. At the end of the program, it shuts down everything and it goes back to the E0 home position, which is the machine home position at X0, Y0. Place your cursor on that line and hit C. Let's position the machine at, let's say, X10. Make sure you put that decimal point in there. And Y8.5. Okay, you can see the changes made in the closing line. Now all it's going to do is it's going to hit that line and bounce off and go home. There's one other thing we have to insert. By hitting the I, hit M1, like Michael 1, and enter. If your optional stop toggle switch is in the on position, when it sees that M1, it's going to stop right there. Let's run this program again and see what kind of problem or uh, enhancement that did. All right, now we have the program starting at the back left corner. The toolpath initiating at the back left corner. Making the 8-inch square cut around the outside. There is no cutter cop going on here. The tool in the register is zero. Now if we program this right, this table is going to stay almost exactly where it is and it's going to bring the piece to me. Look at that. You can see the difference of where it would normally be to where it is. This is much more comfortable. You can look at the envelope. It can only get about another inch closer to the machine. Looking at the spindle versus the table, you know you're just about at the end of the stroke to the rear of the table. So that M1 command is real nice. At this point, the machine is in a hold position. With the blue light flashing, if you were to hit the start, the machine goes back to the zero, zero, effectively ending the program because that's the last line in the program but it is still in an auto standby if you want it to run another part. Just hit the start button. Okay, well I'm not sure exactly what the time looks like on this video, but those are basic G1 commands. G1 is linear. G1 can be a diagonal linear. It doesn't have to be square to the table. It can be, it can be a Z ramping up it can be a Z ramping up X, Y, Z move. It can be a combination move. But ultimately, the result of a G1 is a straight line move. A G0 is a rapid. G2 and G3 are radius moves. Uh, showing about a 13 minute on this video. Let's put in one radius on this part just to show you what a G2. And a G2 is a clockwise radius. So let's take a look at a G2 insert here. I'm going to hit manual to get back into my program. I'm going to hit the U button until I get up into the body of the program, just underneath the tool call. Let's go down to the D. Back corner, all the way to the back corner. Now I don't want to stay in the back corner, I want to drive until the next line of code. Let's get back to the stabilizer. Bar. There we go. Instead of going all the way to the far right corner, let's go down. And I'm going to change that to X0. So I'm going to hit the C button. Let's go X, zero, enter. Now right now the machine has stopped at the center line. I'm going to insert G2 for a clockwise arc. Now G2 command can go any increment from zero to 360 degrees. But if you're using a G2 arc command and you're under or at 90 degrees, you can just simply enter the destination point of that arc and the radius that you want to use. So I'm going to enter X 4.0 and since it's a downward arc now it's going to end up on the Y0. So Y0 and the radius are 4.0. Now just this little G2 command when it gets back to a non-designated line it will know that it's a modal G1 feed command. So let's see what happens there. This should go from the back left corner to the center line, swing a big arc down in the middle, 
and finish out the square. We can check it by graphing with a G and an A. And there's the radius that we just put in. Let's see what it looks like on the machine. Position back left. It'll hit here and start the arc. There is your four inch radius. It's coming to the Y zero. Back to the front right corner. And along the back edge where it will retract in the Z and the table will deliver the part to the front of the machine. There you go. That is a very basic G0, G1, G2 command and since there's nothing on here I can really use the G3. Well actually I could. Let's do the G3 on the front left corner and make, an, make a concave cut in this part. One more edit. Kill the manual. Hit it one more time. And let's come down here and look for our location where we can make our edit. I'm going to hit the D and come down. There, the G2 is the radius in the back right corner. The Y minus 4 brings us all the way to the front. X minus 4, we're going to change that. We want it to go to the X0 location. So C for change, X0, enter. If you like what you see in the command line down below, hit it again and it should show up on the screen right there. All right, now let's insert, I for insert, G3. Now a G3 is a counterclockwise arc. So one corner is going to be round, one corner is going to be caved in. So on the G3, we have to now enter the destination where we want to go. We want X minus 4.0, far left corner of the part, center line, Y0, and the radius, 4.0. Once again, the Y4 final move is modal. We can graph that, see what it looks like. G on the key paddle, A for auto, and there it is. Positive radius one side, negative radius on the other side. Whoop. Let's hit the, the top. Let's go for auto. As soon as that light blinks, off we go. Let's take a look. Back left corner. G2 initiates here. A G1 linear mode to the front, G1 to the corner, G3 counterclockwise arc, back to the Y0, back to the Y4.0 and done. And the part comes back to save your back. Alright guys, that's all I'm going to cover, G0, G1, G2 and G3 clockwise counterclockwise arcs those were 90 degree segments so I just entered the R value anything 90 or less an R value is fine uh, we will get into much larger G2 and G3 arcs with what's called an I and J entry and there's some math involved in that so stay tuned we will be back with part five thanks for watching